It's the 16th of April. The crypto market's going down. I've got some views on that, a little bit of an update on the war. We also have Parcel and Sharky launching today. And tomorrow we have the LFG vote for the second time. Let's dive in and get through all this alpha. So firstly, having a look at CoinGecko, it's sad. I know it's very sad. There was like a nice little pump and everyone got excited. And now just look, oh, devastating. Absolutely devastating. My poor bonk position. What is this down? Oh goodness. Oh goodness. I did not do a smart thing with Bonk, I'm guessing, no. Well, you win some, you lose some. We'll go into the war in a, in a quick second. However, you can see that Solana bounced up and then it's, it's just shot right back down. And because it's a newer token compared to say Bitcoin, ETH, BNB, the dumps can quite often be significantly larger. So, you know, really quite massive. Let's have a look. Where's Matic doing in all this? They're doing not too bad, really. So this is where we are at the moment. Now let's have a look at some analysis and some viewpoints. So same pump. So if Israel has a big response, as you may know, there's a conflict between Israel and Iran, then $52,000 is what Bitcoin could potentially drop to. The other take could be a cyber attack. So as opposed to just going straight into war, just attacking the internet of the country, you know, whatever they want to do, it could be far more just working on closing down the infrastructure, putting some viruses into the computer, that sort of stuff. Let's have a look at this take. Now, personally, I don't want to be covering war. I don't think anyone really does. And it's certainly something that I know nothing about, to be perfectly honest. So all I can really do is find potentially good information that has a history of being good. And maybe it's going to apply because history often rhymes. It doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. So as an example, this one here from Alex says, most likely scenario, according to the geopolitical outfit Green Mantle, never heard of them, is escalation. These guys nailed the Ukraine events in real time. Israel retaliates, driving Iran to attack again. The key question is then if the US gets entangled or not. So let's have a look here. Here's a big list of potential things that's happened in the past. And then here's a little bit of a breakdown of what potentially could happen. I think it is likely that Israel will attack back. And although that means a lot more destruction in the Middle East, stocks going down, markets going down, crypto going down, I still think that's what's going to happen. If you need to, go and watch some videos regarding Israel and the Middle East, how it all works. There's definitely a massive amount of tension there. You essentially have this major region and it's always been at conflict for thousands of years. Then in the middle of it, you've got a different religion, the Jewish state. So I won't get involved with anything political. The best situation, of course, would be no war. But people are tribal, they have to protect what they want to protect, and I think war is likely. Alex also says down here, 57 to 58k in terms of Bitcoin, if there's a strong response from Israel, and if the US gets involved, 52,000. And we move down a little further, and Alex has sold three quarters of his Solana. Long term, personally, very bullish on crypto, very bullish on Solana, of course. But you just have to be aware of what's going on out there, and how world economies affect all these things this magical internet money. In other news, it seems as though there is a Chinese Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETF. This is just from my research assistant, so I haven't actually gone and double checked how accurate this is. It seems kind of massive, to be perfectly honest. These apparently have been approved by the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission. Now on to on-chain stuff. So parcels launching later today. Sharky has already launched. And tomorrow we have Jupiter voting with six candidates, including Sanctum, Nine Heroes, Up Rock and others. So we'll start off quickly with Parcel. Overall, a lot of bullish sentiment for Parcel, in my opinion. The claim goes live at 12.59 UTC, and then you can start trading on Bybit and centralized exchanges at one o'clock. Just go to app.parcel.co, or just find the official link from Parcel's Twitter, and you can go and claim your Parcel right here. If you have any points, you need to have more than 6,000 points, and then just go and claim your Parcel. To find out what addresses are actually eligible for Parcel, Go and use Z's airdrop checker, just airdropped.link. And as mentioned, this is basically how the allocation is going to be. The top five wallets get a massive amount. They provided an insane amount of liquidity, did an insane amount of trades. So I think this is certainly worth it, to be honest. And then 48% get this amount. And then these smaller wallets, they only get 20 parcel each. In terms of NFTs, the parcel NFT, if you diamond handed it, you get a little bit more parcel. If you hadn't had it for quite as long, then you get 420 parcel. And if you own a Mad Lad 
it's 150 parcel. Here's the official doc on the distribution. Now, personally, I'm gonna be holding on to my parcel. We've got rental markets coming, token perps, foreign exchange, and an insane amount of value will come, in my opinion, from parcel. Then if you want to, you can go and trade on backpack. If you get your trading volume up with backpack, then you're likely gonna get some sort of future token airdropped from backpack. Of course, you can go to OKX if you like, but Bybit has a decent reward here, 50,000 USDT in the prize pool. But as I don't plan on going there, I have no idea how you'd qualify for that. Maybe you've got to be a big trader, or maybe it's kind of just shared. And KuCoin is also going live. Now, if we go to Wales market, we can see that the price is currently trading at around 80 cents. And this was quite a bit higher last night. So let's scroll on back, see if we can go back to yesterday. It was about $1.30 or so. Maybe, maybe $1.20. We could say $1.20. Of course, overnight, war escalations, etc., and prices in general have dipped. Now, Sharky has been launched with the official LFG website. You can check your airdrop allocation here. And if you're a dupe staker, then just remember that active staking rewards will come to you in the future, as an example, July or maybe later. So every time someone uses the LFG launchpad, a certain amount of the supply of the tokens goes to Jupiter. The majority of that goes to the DAO, and gets distributed however the DAO wants to distribute it, and a small portion goes to the team. Personally, I think the actual launch time was really strange. 10 a.m. UTC basically means that America's still asleep. And if we're looking at the official link here, we can see they had the goal of basically getting $5 million worth of USDC, in which case you would need to get the price to $1.60. It got up to maybe like 90 cents, and now it's coming back down. Personally, I don't have any allocation of Shark, and I'm not trying to get any Sharky. As for the tokenomics, I think it took a little bit of time for these to actually come out, which is not a good thing. 100 million Sharky here, airdrop 7.5%, and then the rest of the details. Sharky itself was trading for about $1.50, actually higher than that, on Wales market, so you could have sold your allocation nice and early. Or if you wanted to, you could have sold if you thought the price was going to go down, even if you didn't have an allocation, go and put up the collateral and then potentially make a bit of money today by buying it off the market and selling it. Now, there's been a decent amount of FUD and I think a lot of it is actually well-founded. So I didn't really have anything to do with Sharky because I'm more focused on DeFi. I feel there's a lot more value in DeFi. It's easier to do and there's a lot less volatility in general. Anyway, so Austin did a decent amount here, grinding away, getting some OG points, Forgot to do something with Zeely, which of course is his mistake, whatever. But he went through all this, putting in a decent amount, and he can essentially claim 30 shark. So like $24 worth of tokens. And here's another one. 3,055 soul of borrowing on Sharkify, roughly 450k, I guess, at current prices, potentially, to receive 233 shark across three wallets. Holding one mad lad received 169 shark. Now, Mad Lad's definitely the meta, definitely a good idea. If you got a Mad Lad under 50 soul, that would have been an absolute bargain. They're getting a decent amount of airdrops, of course, but it's quite unusual to give a decent amount to someone that's not even using your DAP. I mean, Wormhole did this. I've used Wormhole an extensive amount, done a tutorial on Wormhole. I like Wormhole, and one person with a Mad Lad got more tokens than me. Despite me actually using the product, giving feedback, doing a tutorial, all this sort of stuff. And with this occasion, if someone went and did, say, I don't know, 600 soul worth of borrowing, a mad lad would have just received 169 shark. Now, Jimmy the Greek actually owns a mad lad and getting a bigger airdrop than most of their power users. This isn't okay. Of course, it's great to get free money, but I really don't think that these sort of tokenomics are going to encourage people to one, want the token, and two, potentially even use Sharkify. Now, remember, nothing's financial advice. These are just my views. People can learn from the mistakes or they don't have to. Whatever. Maybe they don't even think they're mistakes. So Restuda from the Sharky team says, please don't FUD. Just wait and see a little bit. Even if your numbers look less than expected, it's not all to the story. We have something special to be announced. If they look good, tell the world about it. If you believe something's wrong, team will try to help. We always do. I don't think this is fair for you to do to expect this of your community. You've had time to get it right. You've seen other projects get it right. You can hire advisors to help you get it right. And then you go and do it wrong. There is really no excuse at the moment to not learn from other people's mistakes. 
Now, of course, if they fix it up, if they manage to improve things, great. But in many respects, it looks as though Sharky has messed up here. But also, to be honest, banks messed up themselves with their tokenomics release and their rewarding of an airdrop and stuff like that. So no one's really getting it right in the NFT space. I found this information from Fabiano. It's a thread. It'll be linked below. The initial pre-sale, I'm not sure who qualified for this, but it was at 23 cents per token. There may be a lock on those tokens. I'm not really sure. Of course, I'll do my best to get as much information as I can to you. But if you're interested in something, you really need to do a decent amount of research. And even if you're bullish on a protocol, maybe their tokenomics are a bit shonky. So enough with those launches. Let's go on to the future launches. So we've got six candidates that you'll be able to vote for from tomorrow, April 17th, 5 p.m. UTC. Digital Social ID, Uprock, Monkey Gods Lab, Sourceful, Nine Heroes, and Sanctum. Has a little bit of a spiel on each of them. Personally, if I was going to make a prediction, Nine Heroes will get the most amount of votes. Then the second will be between Uprock and Sanctum. Very bullish on Sanctum, but they've got one major thing which I don't agree with, and they haven't released any information whatsoever on their tokenomics. The dupe community is all about transparency, so the fact that they do not have tokenomics released means that I think Uprock will get the second place. And if I am right, if Sanctum ends up getting third, then let this be a lesson for any future projects. Your tokenomics must be transparent to the community. They must be. There are no excuses. There are just no excuses. Web3 is supposed to be about decentralization, transparency, building a community, all these sort of things. Now, having said this, I like Sanctum. I like the product. And Validator.com is very likely going to actually issue an LST, a validator.com LST. But I think it's appropriate that I remain as unbiased as possible. These other projects, Sourceful, Monkey God Labs, and Digital Social ID, they've got some good exposure. They've gained some people that are interested. Maybe they've built up their community a little bit more. And in the future, they can go with another launch pad. Jupiter is shipping more things. Metropolis Part 1, enabling users to immediately trade new tokens and markets. So now, previously, you had to go to t0.jupe.ag. Now you can just go to jupe.ag, put in a new token here, and you'll be able to find it, and it will scan the route immediately, basically, I think, in real time. And of course, Jupe is the place to be. Jupe now holds a dominant 42.2% share of active addresses on Solana. Now onto some validator news. The 1.17.3 release is now recommended for general use by mainnet beta validators. We are expecting 1.18 to come out soon. I don't know when. And 1.18, that has a scheduler which improves the congestion. But this is still patching and improving things as well. In the last few days, Solana saw an inflow of over $166 million worth of stable coins. So maybe these have been deployed to try and pick up some cheap on-chain soul. If you want to grab some Magic Eden diamonds, you can go and do some Phantom Quests. Four weeks, 500,000 diamonds per week. And one simple task just go and do these quests right here with Phantom. Yesterday, this came out here. Tensor, 11%, Magic Eden, almost 84% of Solana Marketplace volume. My expectation here, of course, people farming for diamonds for Magic Eden, and Tensor has already gone and actually done their drop. There is some information here, though, and that is 98% of wash trading volume is happening on Magic Eden. To be perfectly honest, though, it doesn't matter. In crypto, if you can make money off something, then people will make money off things. So now Tense has to go and find a way to provide more value to pull back people to use their platform. Personally, this is not what I'm good at. NFT trading like this, I'm not good at. Obviously, right now, the meta would be to go and farm diamonds with Magic Eden. Instant Cell is now live for Magic Swap. So I've covered Magic Swap with RainFi. So as an example, let's just go with this example. Let's say you used Magic Swap to buy the dip, you paid 100 USDC to get 10 soul, then soul pumped, and your bags are now worth 1,450 soul. Before instant sell, you would have to find to pay back your debt and receive the tokens, and now you can just go and sell them, repay the lender, and bank with that profit. So another cool feature has been shipped by Rainfly. If you want to witness the fitness and get amongst it, then join Moonwalk's first public and sponsored game with an added bonus for participants who compete in Dubai. Winners who are physically playing in Dubai based off time zone during the game will split the $7,000 sponsored pot. The entry fee is 0.5 sol. The step goal is 10,000 steps. It's only happening for three days. 
and this is the game code and it's public. So just to make it really, really simple, even if you're not in Dubai, you can join the game and play against the other players. You just won't have access to the additional sponsor pot. Asset Dash has come with a feature, MemeFlow. MemeFlow is a meme coin accelerator powered by Asset Dash and Elements. They go and identify and partner with select meme coins for MemeFlow, and then they have some vesting partnership with this. This looks like a really popular, cool idea, so we'll have to see how it goes. Radiance DAO and Phase Labs are introducing the Bonkathon, April 29th to June 10th. So this is a six week hackathon, which is a decent amount of time, focused on expanding the Bonk ecosystem. We don't have any details on it at present, but I imagine there's gonna be some decent prizes and well worth entering if you've got something with product market fit. Now your actionables for the day. Number one, check and claim your parcel allocation. Personally, I'm probably not gonna sell any of my parcel. I think it's undervalued, so I'm gonna hold it. Sign up for Parcels Drip. I mentioned this yesterday, but just go to drip, so drip.house drip.haus and go and sign up and subscribe for Parcel and their actual drip house. So go and subscribe for Parcel's drip. The first one should be coming tomorrow. Claim your shark at lfg.jupe.ag if you're eligible to do so. I think the cutoff date is the 30th of April. And try Magic Eden and Phantom's Diamond Quests if you've got the time and if you're into this sort of thing. That's all for today. Just remember, right now, there's a potential for another war to be starting properly. So we could see lower prices. Ensure that your leverage is not crazy, unless, of course, you know what you're doing. And if you don't want to be liquidated, make sure you've got enough collateral to avoid any liquidations if you're borrowing some USDC based on Sol or something like that with Camino, as an example. I'll catch you tomorrow.